Hey, what's up guys? Killboy here. I wanted to um, sort of put together a video to answer some of the questions I've been getting about uh, some of the drone footage that we've been getting lately. This is more geared towards people who are thinking about getting into um, the drone hobby or if you know, you've know you just gotten a drone maybe and, and you're looking for some beginner advice and things like that. If, you, if you've been flying a drone for a year or more then this is probably not going to be for you. I'll try to speed this along. I don't like videos that drag on and there's going to be some jump cuts in here to you know sort of mask out my ums and uhs and stuff. I'm bad for doing that. So let's get to it. Basically one of the questions I get most common is you know what's a good starter drone and this is all over the place. Everybody has different opinions on this. I'm not saying that the way I feel about it is you know the correct answer. It's just one to think about. I feel like using a beginner level indoor drone or one of the cheaper drones that doesn't have GPS based flight and is very dependent on user input and completely dependent on user input will more than likely turn you off and be more frustrating than it's really worth. Now it does teach you some fundamentals and this is important if you can go into it with this mindset that it will be a challenge to learn to fly one of the cheaper non-GPS based drones and, and, and if you're a persistent type of person and you're not easily frustrated then it can teach you a lot but if you feel like um, you might get frustrated easily that may not be the thing to do especially if you have some disposable income you know I know that some of these are expensive but basically the more expensive they get the easier they are to fly and of course the more expensive they are to crash but they don't crash as often so everything's sort of a trade-off but Right now, as of this recording, I think that one of the best beginner drones on the market is the DJI Mavic, and I'll explain why along the way. The reason I have all these others out here is short of assure you that those of you that don't know me, I'm not just speaking from inexperience or you know things I've read online. This is some of the stuff that I've flown over the years, and I'm not great. I'm not really that good of a flyer. I flew traditional style helicopters early on and I never was that good with them. I couldn't do all the flips and things like that. I could get them move around. But they did, they don't have any kind of GPS based flight and they're really tricky to control real fast and maneuverable. And I had some smaller ones too and I played around with some indoor stuff. Over the years I, I went on to like this, I really like this, this big 3DR uh, six rotor three legged job and it's GPS based. And GPS based, what that means is it has a GPS receiver in it and it measures the distance it is basically from all these satellites in space and tries to hold a position. GPS based flight really changed everything. That's when drones and everything sort of blew up. You know, these helicopters, they've been around forever. There was gas based helicopters for decades, you know, and, and airplanes and everything. But once everything started going GPS based, that made it so much easier to fly. And the way that I explain this to people who are kind of getting into it and don't quite grasp what that means, basically I say, think about it like this. When you're controlling that GPS based helicopter, quadcopter, drone, whatever you want to call it, we'll just call it a drone, think of it as you're not really controlling the drone directly. You're controlling a point in space in the air that it's trying to go to at all times. And so when you move the joysticks, you move that point and it goes to that point. So what makes it that much easier to fly, as you can see now probably, is if you take your hands off the controller, that point's not moving. So therefore the drone tries to stay in that one spot. Now things can happen that affect the drone's uh, location and it will fight to get back to that spot. So if the wind blows it'll, it'll try to get back to that point. Or if you grab it by the landing gear or something, I don't advise this, and you pull it away from that point and let go, it'll go back to that spot. So it's always fighting to get to that point that you told it to go to the last time you gave some inputs in the controls. So with that in mind you can see how you know it changed the game whenever GPS based controls came along now you didn't have to directly continuously make adjustments based on winds and attitude of the craft and things like that it changed everything the other thing that made a big difference is live video feeds to a screen on a controller once that happened anybody that played a video game basically got it it made sense when you look at that screen right is right left is left forward is forward back is back and so if you've played Call of Duty or any video games like that that made a lot of sense. Even if you haven't, it's still easy to pick up, but the younger generation didn't have to learn all the orientation issues that came with non-stream video flight. So normally when you're looking at it, 
if it's facing away from you, then right is right and left is left and everything's good. But as soon as you rotate that thing, all that changes. <laughs> so when it's facing you, everything's backwards. And that's pretty easy to learn. Everything is reversed, so right goes left and all that. But if it's facing 90 degrees from you, that's really it really gets weird. You know, you push to the right and it goes away from you. You know, to its right. It's always, it's always moving aircraft-based directions. So when you're looking at it line of sight, things can get really weird depending on which way it's pointing in, in relation to you. But as long as you're looking at that screen, everything stays oriented, you know, naturally. But this, that becomes sort of a problem because if things go wrong, you lose that video feed, you need to know how to control that craft by line of sight flight. And you should always kind of keep an eye on it anyway just to see what's going on around you. Because even these guys with sensors that we'll get to in a second here, they can't see in all directions. So if you're moving sideways, you can slide sideways right into something. So you need to keep an eye on it because your camera won't show that. So moving on, I went to a 3DR Solo after that and I got one of these waterproof splash drones here. Kind of the reason I got all this stuff out, I, I really haven't ever had it all in one place. And so I kind of want to take some pictures of it. But yeah, I got the 3DR Solo. It was a step up. The next model from 3DR, the Y6 that I had before. This was a good drone. I, I pre-ordered it from the get-go. Um, didn't have really any major issues with it. It never did have very good GPS lock. If I was down in some kind of a hole or something with trees around me, I'd have a hard time getting GPS lock. So I had to fly it manually, non-GPS, up above the tree line and sit there and continuously keep it in a spot until it got GPS lock. And then it was, you know, okay to fly, but it always kind of drifted around a little bit. But it was a pretty good drone. I got a lot of good footage of that. You've seen my stuff on YouTube. Um, a lot of it came from that 3DR Solo. Didn't have very good radio range, so I modified the radio with some really cool antennas that gave it, like, triple the range. The waterproof drone, I had some aspirations of shooting some some of the footage from all these lakes and reservoirs that I have around here, and that one's got, like, a, a waterproof gimbal. It's the only drone that I had ever seen that has an actual waterproof gimbal so you can drop the camera underneath it down into the water and it stabilizes you know when you take off it keeps it stable when the uh, Mavic was announced I, I never did really get into the Phantom series just really didn't like the way they looked I didn't like the way the controller felt so I never was into the DJI line until the Mavic was announced and that was like that clicked I really liked the way it looked I, I liked the way the controller was designed the compactness and so I pre-ordered it took about two months to get here and as soon as I flew that thing it was a game changer. It is so stable compared to what I've been flying I didn't really even realize it. It was as bad as it was. So basically the reason that this really changed things and the reason that I'm, I'm going to recommend this if you can justify the cost as a beginner drone is that this is the easiest thing. It, it, it is so good at what it does that there's a lot of people that are getting these new, uh, my wife, we got one for her and I'll show you in a minute. This is the whole thing inside this little bag right here, controller and all. She's never flown anything and she's picked it up. She's been out kind of getting used to it. She's, she's flying it by herself. She's flown without me around her. Picked it up just like that because it flies so good. The reason is this has a suite of sensors along with the GPS antenna. So first of all, the GPS system in this drone is really good. It, it, it picks up more satellites than any of the drones I've ever had before because it uses Europe's GPS satellites and the American GPS satellite. It locks on to a lot more so I can be down in a hole and before I can even get everything situated it's pretty much ready to go. It's locked on to all the satellites that it needs to. Really impressive satellite GPS acquisition speed. That said, we still are on sort of version one of GPS. You know, this is this is all fairly new, this whole satellite array that's over us, and eventually it will become better, faster, more satellites up there to lock onto. But for now, there's a little bit of drift, and especially if you only have one sensor. The best setup that surveyors and stuff use, I believe, uses at least two sensors, and they sort of, you know, confirm with each other how much difference there is and sort of average it out so they can get down to inch millimeter precision, apparently. We only have so much space here, so they can't put, you know, two GPS sensors on here. So even though it's a really good GPS sensor, it still has drift. And when we turn the other sensors off, which you can do in the software, it will move around some and you'll see it drift, especially um, the up and down. So what it also has going for it, it has dual optical sensors in the front, basically cameras, and it has binocular vision. So it's watching out the front 
to not only see if there's an object in front of it, but when you're close to the ground, it's looking at what's going on in front of it, and if it notices there's movement, it'll correct for it more quickly than just using a GPS. And on the bottom, it has two more optical sensors, again, for binocular vision, basically downwards. And again, it's looking at the ground as long as it's within 12, 15 feet of the ground. You know, it's watching for patterns of movement on the ground, and it will adjust accordingly really quickly. And then finally, it has two sonar sensors on the bottom also that help with sensing distance. Because with, with optical sensors, it's hard to sense how far away things are. So the sonar sensors on the bottom, once it gets so close to the ground, it senses how far away the ground is, and that helps it maintain height. And then the optical helps it maintain lateral longitudinal consistency. So what you end up with is a drone that, and, and there's videos out there, I've got some on my channel. I mean, as soon as you take off, it's just like zzzz, and it just, it just sits there. I mean, perfectly parked, and I've never had one that was that, you know, stable to fly. As far as, as far as, you know, again, as a first drone candidate, um, it is like a thousand dollar drone, but it's very smart. It has all kinds of automated flight modes and everything built into their little software. But the cool thing, the, you know, the, the real game changer about this drone is its compactness. It folds up, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it folds up very small and very quickly. And you've got a package that will, that will fit into this case. This is the case that comes with their optional Fly More package. I believe it's cost about 300 bucks. And it comes with a case and extra batteries and some other charger things. So this is Lori's uh, Kill Girls setup. And, you know... Drone drops right into there, controller is right over here, and then there is room for the battery and the charger and, you know, the extras and everything, uh, cables in here. So, really cool because it allows you to just always have your drone with you, kind of like a camera, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, there's almost no excuse not to always just grab this bag, take it with you. You never know when you might see something that you'll be wishing you had had your drone with you to record. The other cool thing is there's already, it's, it's so popular, they basically had a real hard time keeping up with demand. They, they sold way more than they were expecting, I believe, on the pre-sale. And so they're finally caught up in the sales. They're only about one or two days if you order from the company. The point is, stupid popular. So there's like this big aftermarket that's just coming out with all kinds of cool stuff. Some of them are just kind of pointless, but some of them are pretty good. For instance, this one upgrade that I've got on mine that we'll probably get for Lloyd's. Also, if you're ever out in the grass, which we, it's not a very urban area where we live here. So we're always flying out of, out of grass and stuff. And it does sit really low to the ground. Um, it, it does keep the camera up and there's a couple legs in the front lifting the front end up somewhat. But the props can get caught up in grass and it gets hard to start it up without it, you know, hitting something. So they are making these extensions for the legs that go on here, here, and then a clippy thing right here. And it gives you some height. So if you're sitting in grass, you know, it can take off. Um, there's several companies making these, so there's a lot of competition. The other thing is I messed around with my remote. So, you know, I've flown, like I said, all these other jobs and a lot of them have really intimidating remotes so like this guy for instance with the with the y6 it has the remotes with all the switches on you got to kind of remember what all this stuff does memorize everything has some knobs on top to control the camera this can be a little bit intimidating for somebody that's just getting into it but everything does kind of serve a purpose they kind of worked all of that switch gear into the app which isn't always ideal for quick changes but the controller for this guy is Awesome. I mean, really small. It's got a real solid feel, all rubber coated. And all you have to do is pop your phone in between the, the holders and plug in the cable, and you've got video on your phone screen and really good display up here with other information on it. You can also, you know, there's, again, there's a whole market for upgrades and things like that. So, what people are wanting was maybe something a little bigger than their cell phone. You know, if you get older, your eyes are a little diminished as mine are, and looking at things up close. That can be a little bit small. There's a lot of information on the screen sometimes. So you want to put a tablet in there. The the way to go if you have one or if you're if you're planning on you know doing the ultimate setup, I think the way to go is an iPad mini, whatever the latest one is for. It will fit in here without any kind of adapter. And that's as big as you can go and still fit in here without some kind of adapter. But what I ended up getting was the uh, NVIDIA Shield, which is a bigger tablet. And I also made this sunshade, so I was kind of showing this off. I just made this sunshade, like, night before last. But basically, it gives me a big screen in here. 
and then I got this big sunshade that I, that I kind of designed. I, I came up with this idea while I was falling asleep one night and um, basically it'll fold right here. This whole front half will fold backwards and I can make it a shorter sun shield or a longer one. And then there's a company making these real cheap plastic parabolic reflectors with some metal inside that gives you a little bit more distance. But the controller already gets like four mile range. The main purpose for those is to give you a little bit stronger video signal. But I haven't really seen a need to use them that much. I haven't had any problems. It's just they were like 10 bucks or something, so I figured I'd try them. So, yes, I mean, I think that the, the, the Mavic Pro is definitely a good choice for a first drone. If you're looking to get into it, it's just super easy to fly. There's a huge community out there. You've got your butt heads, but you got a lot of good people that are helping out. And you're not going to be stranded. You know, any kind of issues you have they'll take care of it. If you order from DJI directly, you will get the option within 48 hours you can apply for their warranty program that will basically the drone as long as you send it back. If you crash it or if it you know goes down water or anything, as long as you have something to send back, as long as you don't lose it and you can't find it, then they will fix it. But there's a deductible of like 80 bucks the first time and 130 bucks the second time. So what a lot of people are finding out is a state farm has a personal articles policy, I believe it's called, and they will cover the drone for like 60 bucks a year, no deductible, and even if you lose it, I don't know how they're doing this, but even if you lose the thing, they'll still replace it, or if you crash it, or if anything gets messed up on it, they'll replace it, and most people are saying that they have gone through with a, with a uh, claim, and they didn't get dropped, they didn't get penalized, but a couple people said they didn't get dropped, so it's hit or miss, but... For one, at least one crash, 60 bucks, and you get everything replaced or repaired on State Farm. So get up with them. I would really recommend that probably over the DJI Care refresh thing because, again, it has a deductible, and if something happens and, and it gets stolen or, or you fly it somewhere that you can't retrieve it, it goes underwater or something like that, you're kind of screwed, and they're not going to take care of you on that. I think what I wanted to move on to now is for those of you who are thinking about getting into this or just getting into this there is some things you need to know and keep in mind for your first few flights and I'm sure I'm gonna forget stuff so please do your research I know everybody wants to get the toy up in the air most people do you know without really spending a lot of time setting it up there's not a lot of setup to do but you do need to update things and it can take about a day just to get everything updated calibrated and all that stuff but most drones kind of work the same way if you get one you need to update, you know, connect to the internet, connect your phone to it, and follow the process. It'll give you messages. It's all pretty straightforward. The updating process, I will say, on this drone is pretty slow. I know on the Solo, it used to update in like, you know, a few seconds, and this thing can take quite a while, 15, 20 minutes sometimes, uh, transferring everything over. Calibration is something that used to be kind of an issue with these, but I think they've got it squared away now. So you used to need to go through and calibrate controller and uh, the compass and, and IMUs, and it's all, in the, it's all in the software, but their software for this thing is kind of convoluted. I've talked about that in other videos. I'm not going to, you know, go on about it, but you need to dig around in the menus, watch some videos about setting up the, the Mavic for the first time. But the big thing, the big thing I want you guys that are new to flying uh, to please learn to do first thing and keep in mind is you need to fly, your, at first, you need to fly with this drone facing away from you, away from you, okay? So it needs to be wherever it's at, it needs to be pointing away from you. Don't fly it sideways and don't fly it looking at you as much as you want to be on camera because um, the controls um, get backwards. So if you're flying by the screen, you'll be fine. But as soon as you look up and it looks like it's starting to drift into a tree, you're going to be pushing the wrong way and you're going to make it fly into that tree. So keep this thing pointed away from you. And the way you do that, left, thumb, joystick, left and right is rotate craft. Okay? So as you move it around you, you need to be, it's not going to want to rotate. It's wanting to hold its position. As you move it over here, it'll keep facing that way until you tell it to rotate. So keep it pointed away from you until you get the hang of it and get a few hours of, of flight time under your belt before you start flying this thing, you know, in, a, in an orientation other than pointing away from you as long as you're going to be looking at it. Now, once you, the other, the other suggestion would be a lot of, a lot of beginners tend to fly a little too low. One of the old adages about flying RC airplanes and helicopters was never fly below three crashes. So the point was, if something happens up there, you have time to recover before you hit the ground three times. I'm not saying you have to be that high, but try to get up. You know, a lot of people get a little freaked out about it being getting away from them. 
you know, it'll it'll return to home if it loses signal, if the battery gets too low, it remembers where it took off from, it knows that GPS coordinate where it left the ground from. So if anything happens, it will fly straight back over and come straight down. Now the minimum altitude for it returning to home, you set in the app and it needs to be higher than any structure around you. I think by default in this thing it's like thirty meters, hundred feet, whatever. So I usually set it a little higher just to make sure that Anything I'm flying over, if it decides to return to home, it will at least go up that high first and then come over to home and then come straight down. Now, if you're above that minimum height, this one will stay at that height that you're at. If you're way up high, then it will just stay that high, come straight over to home, and come straight down, and you know, you're good to go. So don't freak out about the thing being up high. That gives you a lot more safety from hitting obstructions by accident, you get above the trees, you get above this, the buildings and structures and things like that, then you have freedom in that airspace to fly around. Now, the FAA ha recommends that we stay below 400 feet for good reason. Air traffic has a floor of about 500 feet, so they want to keep us, you know, out of them. So keep that in mind, you know, follow the rules. Please don't screw this up for everybody by flying in dumb places close to airports fly smart because we're all being kind of judged right now and there's people out there that they don't like to see anything new and anybody having fun and they just complain about everything so don't give them a reason or any ammunition from the factory these things are set up to be pretty twitchy and fast so one of the things that a lot of users would recommend to a, to a new pilot if they get one of these is familiarize yourself with what they call tripod mode in the software so it'll be on it'll be on your display there's a little icon on the left side of of four rotors I believe and you click on that and then you can go in there and there's some modes for flight and one of them is called tripod mode and the, the intent of the tripod mode is to allow you to shoot video in a very smooth fashion so it limits the top speed to like two miles per hour it slows down all the rotations and all the movements so everything gets real slow and stable it's a great mode to learn in um, and shoot good video and then take pictures and it's all it's all good and you can just turn it off whenever you're ready there's a sport mode button on the side that really lets it rip I mean the thing will go 40 miles an hour um, in sport mode and everything gets real twitchy like that so you know be careful of that it's fun but you need to be up high and you need to be well clear of obstacles because it it turns off the front sensors for obstacle avoidance because at that kind of speed by the time it senses something, it can't stop, so there's no obstacle sensing in the front when you're in sport mode. These don't really crash that great. I mean, they do okay. The props are, um, you know, just pop off and they're replaceable, but the arms being hinged, most drones have a pretty fat area right here where the arm attaches to the body and gives it some resilience and strength there. Because of the folding nature of the Mavic, the arms are the weak point right there at the, at the hinge. They're skinny, there's a moving part, you know, and usually if there's any kind of strong impact this arm's going to break and you cannot fix I, I haven't seen anybody that's fixed those on their own you pretty much they don't sell their replacement stuff you have to send it back to dji and again if you have the state farm insurance thing you're covered whatever the repair bill is from dji it covers it pretty cool i think that about covers it you know if you guys have any questions about any of this that i talk about you're welcome to leave a comment down there and i keep a pretty good eye on the comments i'll answer any questions that i that i see in there and um, and if you decide to get one, you appreciate you know the information, and you want to return the favor, I'll put a link in the description if you can order via my link. Um, it's an affiliate link, and I get a little kickback. It doesn't cost you anything, um, and it helps me afford to you know continue to get and share that with you guys. So I'd appreciate it if you could use that link to go to the DJI store and, and shop around. It's really the best place to order from. You're not going to get much cheaper, and they're shipping now as as fast as anybody else out there ordering directly from them. All right, so I hope that covers everything. Oh, and my little guys down here, these are, um, I'm just getting into this FPV racing setup, and I um, got one for me, and Lori thought she might get into it, but it's it's really hard. You fly by the goggles and uh, direct feed. You can't see anything. They're not GPS-based, and it's, it's pretty tricky. I'm, I'm getting a hang of it, but I got an extra one or two there because they, they're going to crash a lot, and they're, they're not terribly expensive, and repairs and everything are pretty cheap on those. Um... But yeah, that about covers it. You guys have any questions, like I said, let me know. And um, happy flying. I hope I see you out there. Later.